Hi there. Let's review polynomials and then we're going to start factoring them. Here's a polynomial. Let's write it a different way. You need to be aware that there are, let me make this bigger for a few minutes, that there are invisible plus signs in front of minus signs. And in fact, I'm going to make this smaller again. In fact, I'm going to write this the way it really is. Negative 5v to the ninth power plus negative 10v to the fifth power plus 6, positive 6, v to the fourth power plus 5 v, that's to the 1 power, plus negative 5. This is your first term, your second term, your third term, your fourth term, and your fifth term. All right, now we're going to answer the questions. List the terms of the polynomial. Okay, I'm going to list them. And it says to put commas between the terms. Negative 5v to the ninth, comma. Negative 10v to the fifth, comma. 6v to the fourth, comma. 5v to the 1, comma, negative 5. These are the terms of this polynomial, which I rewrote here. Terms are separated by plus signs only. Okay, so this is a term, and 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 this is a term. They're separated by plus signs. Now, the degree of the first term. is the power of the variable, 9. The degree of the second term is 5. The degree of the third term is 4. The degree of the fourth term is 1. And now get ready for this. The negative 5 is a constant. Constants have degree zero. Kind of an ugly zero. Each term has a degree. So do polynomials. When you connect up the terms, you have a polynomial. The degree of the polynomial is the degree of the highest degree term, in this case, 9. The leading term is the highest degree term, negative 5v to the ninth power. 
the leading coefficient of the polynomial is the number in front of the highest degree variable, the highest power variable. The number in front is negative 5. That's the leading coefficient. The constant term of the polynomial is negative 5. Now here's a negative 5. That's the leading coefficient, the LC. But this is also a negative 5. And, <clears throat> and it's the constant. It's totally a coincidence that those two numbers are the same. So you separate the terms by at least imagining a plus sign. The minus sign turns into a negative, negative sign and attaches to the number behind it. Okay, see how the minus 10v to the fifth becomes plus a negative 10v to the fifth. And the minus 5 becomes plus a negative 5. Okay. It's important to know about the degrees of every term. The degree of every term is the highest power of the variable until you get to the term that has no variable. Its degree is 0. The degree of the entire polynomial is the degree of the highest power term which is 9. The leading term of the polynomial is the highest degree term. The leading coefficient is the number in front of the highest degree term. And the constant is the number that does not have a variable. Okay, now we're going to evaluate the polynomials. Polynomials are functions. So it's written as a function here, p of x. p because it's a polynomial. You don't have to call it p of x. You could call it f of x or g of x or h of x or u of x. Anything you want. But here it's called p of x. All right, if I evaluate p of x for, p, for x equals 3, then p of 3 is going to be 3 times 3 squared minus 5 times 3 plus 6. Let's look at this on the calculator. I'm going to put this in the calculator. I think you can see this on the video a lot better than you can see it in class. Okay, so 3 times 3 squared, that's raised to the second power, is called squared, minus 5 times 3 plus 6. Enter. That's 18. So p of 3 equals 18. Now p of negative 1 is going to be 3 parentheses negative 1 squared minus 5 times 
negative 1 plus 6. Just so you can see how to do it, let's put it in the calculator. No, no. 3 parentheses, negative 1 parentheses closed. Minus 5 parentheses, negative 1 parentheses closed. Plus 6. Oops, I made a mistake. I'm going to go second insert and then hit the X squared button. I've just inserted a power 2. You can do things like that. Enter. The answer is 14. So P of negative 1 equals 14. Now watch what I do. Did you see how easy it was for me to leave that power out? If I had hit enter and just written down the number, I might not have double checked it. There's a way to not make these mistakes. Watch what I do. I'm going to push the second button and then I'm going to push enter. That gives me back this line. Now I can go back Okay, I'm going to delete the negative sign, and I'm going to overwrite the 1 with a 0. So I'll put a 0 here, and then use the right arrow key to advance. I'm going to get rid of that negative sign by hitting delete, and then overwrite the 1 with a 0. And then advance with the right arrow key. Now look what I've got. I've put a zero in <coughs> where I would have the x's. 3 times 0 squared minus 5 times 0 plus 6. Enter. That's 6. Calculators can be wonderful things. The more you use it, the more comfortable you get with it. Now here's a polynomial. m of t equals 0.5t to the fourth power plus 3.45t to the third power minus 96.65t squared plus 347.7t. What is that all about? Let's make this bigger. The polynomial function shown below estimates the number of milligrams of ibuprofen in the bloodstream t hours after 400 milligrams of medication has been swallowed. Complete parts A through D. Okay, we're going to do one at a time. And here's a graph of M of T over here. Starting at zero, here we have a T axis. T is acting just like X. Notice here it says t goes from 0 to 6, 0 to 6, and here's the graph of this function between 0 and 6, between t equals 0 and t equals 6. It says, use the graph to estimate the amount of ibuprofen in the bloodstream three hours after 400 milligrams has been swallowed. 
One, two, three. Go up to the graph and then over to the Y or the M of T axis. Now, this is a little bit above that line. This is 300 right here. So, could that be, it can't be 310, but maybe it would be like 305? I don't know. Type a whole number. 305. And then this. These are listed below. It's milligrams. Now, we can know for sure if we actually put three in for the T's. 0 0.5 times three to the fourth power plus 3.45 times three to the third power minus 96.65 times 3 to the second power plus 347.7 times 3. Let's put that in the calculator. Okay. 0 0.5 parentheses 3 parentheses closed. The way you raise um, anything to a power is you um, click on this key right here. Look what it does. Click. I'm going to put a 4 in that box. Then I'm going to hit the right arrow key so I can come down and then type plus 3.45 times 3 to the third power plus 3.45 parentheses 3 parentheses closed. This is called a caret key caret 3 because we're raising it to the third power and then I hit the right arrow key to bring the cursor down so I can continue. Now minus 96.65 parentheses 3 parentheses closed now, I don't have to hit the caret key when I raise something to the second power. All I have to do is hit the x squared key. Yes, then plus 347.7, 347.7 times t, but t is 3. So parentheses 3, parentheses closed. Now I'm going to go back by using the left arrow key, and I'm just going to check and make sure I typed it correctly. 0 0.5 times 3 to the 4th power plus 3.45 times 3 to the 3rd power. That's called cubed. Minus 96.65 times 3 squared plus 347.7 times 3. Enter.
Ha! Pretty darn close. 306.9 milligrams. I'm going to write that in blue. Okay. Now it says use the graph. It doesn't tell us to calculate, to evaluate rather. Use the graph to estimate the number of milligrams of ibuprofen in the bloodstream four hours after 400 milligrams have been swallowed. How many hours? Four hours. Here's four. I go up to the graph, which is not quite at the 200 line. I'm going to make a guess that this is 195. That's my guess. Because notice that these lines go up by 20, 160, 180, 200, 220, 240, 260, 280, 300, 320, 340, 360, 380, 400, and so on. Well, this doesn't look to me like it's halfway. I mean, it's over halfway, don't you think? So this is going to be 180, halfway would be 190, but that's higher than that. So I'm going to say 195. Remember, we're guessing, and it says to use the graph. One, not, <clears throat> eraser, I want to write in black, 195. These are my estimates milligrams. We'll come back and check on it later. Use the function to approximate m of 6. m of 6 means the amount of ibuprofen in the bloodstream after 6 hours. I would say 0. Wouldn't you? 0. I guess you peed it all out. About zero milligrams. Now use the function. Oh, the function. Okay. Use the function means take six and plug it in for each of these. Okay, I was kind of cheating before. Now I am going to do it that way. 0 0.5 parentheses 6 parentheses closed caret 4 right arrow key plus 3.5 45 parentheses 6 parentheses closed caret 3 right arrow key minus 96.65 minus 96.65 parentheses 6 parentheses closed, I hit the X squared button, and that puts a 2, and, and my cursor stays down so I can keep writing, plus 347.7, parentheses 6. Let's see. Zero! Okay, so that's what we've calculated.
Now, we're supposed to use the function to approximate m of 2. Now, I know how easy it is to miss one of these. So what I'm going to do is go second, enter. All right, and now I'm going to go back, 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 back. And I'm going to put a 2 in where the 6s were because it says to evaluate the polynomial for 2. Okay, so I come forward. I overwrite the 6 with a 2. Then I continue forward. Overwrite the 6 with a 2. Continue forward. Overwrite the 6 with a 2. Three forty seven point seven parentheses six. I'm going to overwrite the six with a two. Now you see I had it typed correctly before. So this is a good way to make sure I don't mess it up, which I can do. Anybody can do it. Let's hit enter. This tells me 344.4. Whoop. Well, yeah, I did that with the calculator, didn't I? 344.4 milligrams. Let's take a look at the graph and see if the graph agrees. All right, that's two. I come up here. It's a little bit above 340. Let me write this bigger. And I'm going to write 340. And then bring it down. This is a little bit above 340. So 344.4. Yeah, it could be 344.4. All right. This is pretty good. You nursing majors, this is the kind of problem you will need to be doing in your nursing classes. So master it now. Okay, let's hide that. And now we can read the whole thing. A firm is marketing a new style of sunglasses. I need more sunglasses. I need new sunglasses. The firm determines that when it sells X pairs of sunglasses, its total revenue is given by this polynomial. Revenue is the money you take in. Complete parts A and B below. What is the total revenue when the sale of 26 pairs, when the sale of 26 pairs of sunglasses? From, oh, it's not when, it's from. What is the total revenue from the sale of 26 pairs of sunglasses? Well, X is the number of pairs, so that means I'm going to put 26 in for X. So I'm going to be finding R of 26 equals 228 times 26 minus 0 0.1 times 26 squared. 
we're going to put that in the calculator for sure. Clear. 2, 2, 8. You don't really have to put parentheses. I'm just used to doing that. You can say times 26 minus 0 0.1 times 26 squared. Enter. 5,000 eight hundred sixty dollars and forty cents five thousand eight hundred sixty dollars and forty cents notice the instructions are in blue just like the answer box, you would be putting this in an answer box in my math lab. Round to the nearest cent. When you write money, the numbers to the right, the two numbers to the right of the decimal tell you how many cents you have. How many pennies? Well, you've got 40. Notice the answer was 0.4. So you put a zero on the end to make it 40. Now, what is the total revenue for the sale of 89 pairs of sunglasses? I don't know. Let's find out. That'll be 228 times 89 minus 0 0.1 times 89 squared. Okay, I'm going to go second, enter. Now all I have to do is back up and overwrite 26 with 89. 8, 9. Eight, nine. There now. 228 times 89 minus 0 0.1 times 89 squared. Enter. $19,499 and 0.9 is 90 cents. And it does say round to the nearest cent. So one, nine, four, nine, nine, point nine, and add a zero there. And that will be your revenue, the amount of money you take in for selling 89 pairs of sunglasses. We're going to be dealing more with revenue later. Revenue and cost. Ah, now we are. The total profit P is defined as the total revenue minus the total cost. So profit, which is a function, equals revenue, which is a function, minus the cost of making the product. If you're going to make something to sell, you have to pay for the parts you put together. Yeah, there's always going to be a cost. You have to take away the cost. Hopefully, revenue is greater than cost, so you'll have a profit. Now, find the total profit when the revenue is 149. Here, let's write this right now. 
profit equals 149.77x minus 0.5x squared, that's the revenue, minus the cost, which is 4493.10 plus 0.07x squared. Now, what are we being asked to do? Find the total profit. We're not going to be finding money because we don't know. We don't know what X is. But what we're going to do is find, <clears throat> find the polynomial. So P of X equals. Now remember, this minus is going to act, act like a negative 1. So let's rewrite this. Instead of minus, we're going to write plus negative 1 times 4493.10 times 0.07x squared. So this will be 149.77x minus 0.5x squared plus negative 1 times 4493.10. Did I leave an x out? No, I didn't. I did not. Okay. So negative 1 times this number is going to be negative 4493.10. Negative 1 times 0.07x squared is going to be plus negative 0.07. Is that 0 0.07 or 0 0.7? It's 0 0.7. I made a mistake. Thank goodness I backed up and looked. It is so easy to make mistakes. Zero point seven X squared. Okay. Now I am <clears throat> I am going to rewrite this part as well. There's a reason I'm doing it, and I'll tell you in just a minute. So this minus zero point five X squared, I'm going to rewrite as plus, well, as plus negative 0.5x squared. Now I have a term plus a term plus a term plus a term. Why would I want to do that? And the answer is that when you're adding terms, you can move them, you can move things around when you're adding. You can move terms around. For instance, watch what I'm about to do. So, this is an example. This is not part of the problem. Example. Suppose I'm adding four numbers, 7 plus negative 3. Well, I'm going to make it real, real easy. Forget the negatives. 
7 plus 3 plus 2 plus 6. There. Well, 7 plus 3 is 10, plus 2 is 12, plus 6 is 18. But when I'm adding numbers, order doesn't matter. I can change the order if I want to. 2, 7, plus 6, plus 3, plus 2. 7 plus 6 is 13. Plus 3 is 16. Plus 2 is 18. It equals the same thing. Order doesn't matter when you're adding. Now, I could completely change the order to 2 plus 7 plus 3 plus 6. Completely change the order around. 2 plus 7 is 9, plus 3 is 12, plus 6 is 18. Order doesn't matter when you add. Write that right here. Order doesn't matter when you add. That's called being commutative. Okay, addition is commutative, which means order doesn't matter. You don't have to know the word commutative. I, I just wanted you to know it. Now we're going to go up here. This is added to this is added to this is added to this. So I can move the terms around. P of X equals negative 0 0.5 X squared. Whoa, 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 ah! Help! Zero point five negative zero point five x squared. There, I'm going to mark through this now, so I know I've already done it. I'm going to get the other x squared term plus negative zero point seven x squared plus one forty nine point seventy seven x. plus negative 4493.10. Okay, let me double check again. Yes, that does have an x. Okay. These x squared terms are like terms. I can combine them by adding them. Negative 0 0.5 plus negative 0 0.7. Well, let's do it vertically. It's easier to do it vertically. Plus negative 0 0.7. 5 plus 7 is 12. Carry the 1. 1 plus 0 is 1, plus 0 is 1. Negative 1.2. So this is negative 1.2x squared plus 149.77x Plus minus is a minus 4493.10. Four, 
Now, this is a polynomial that's written correctly. This is called descending order. What's descending? Descending means to go down. What's going down is the degree of the term. This is degree two. This is degree one. And this is degree zero. So your degrees are descending. Two, one, zero. They're going downhill. This is your answer right here. Negative 1.2x squared plus 149.77x. And you wouldn't put the one there. I don't know if my math lab would count it wrong because it's not really what we do. There's an invisible one there that you need to know is there. Minus 4493.10, this is your constant. Degree 2, degree 1, degree 0. Descending order. Also, we added like terms. X squared terms have the same degree, so we can add them. The same variable, the same degree. So we can combine them.